Hello and welcome to Morning Fuel. I am your host, John Bundy. And you believe in the power of the spoken word and its ability to change lives. And that by sharing our stories, we can help others to overcome challenges that they cannot overcome on their own. Whether it's a victory you need to win in business or in your own personal life, you understand that answers can be found in listening to stories and ultimately understanding that those stories don't belong to them. All right. Today's guest, having a desire to create a very niche, much-needed service that could help a ton of businesses expand and scale across Virginia and the nation, he launched out into the entrepreneur sphere. His favorite thing about what he does is helping take a ton of work off of business owners' plates. He says his methods for keeping productive is not letting the day manage him, but him managing the day. Also, prioritizing what will have the biggest impact on his day. Advice that he gives to others aspiring to succeed as business owners is, it's a marathon and there are highs and lows. Always take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Please extend a warm Morning Fuel podcast welcome to owner of the Virginia branch of Eagle One Business to Business Lead Generation and Digital Marketing Services, Ryan Redmond. What's happening, sir? Good to see you. What's going on, man? Man, hell just an uh, hell of an introduction. Yeah, dude, I, I I love it. I mean, I love what I do, and uh, I'm glad to have you here. I've been looking forward to this interview for a while. Yeah, man, I'm glad we met. Yeah. Glad we got to do this. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm gonna grab my coffee here real quick. The most important thing. Is- well, it's t- it's too good, dude. I haven't had. It's this. morning fuel. We have to have coffee. Well, absolutely. That's part of it. That definitely is part of it. Cheers, Cheers brother. Cheers, man. Um, yeah. So, well, I mean, we. We met on a virtual, and, and man, I've got, I've got PowerPoint poisoning, brother. I've got, I've got Zoom poisoning. There's too much Zoom, uh, you know, yeah, the past two face years. To face. <laughs> so we did get to meet finally face-to-face at Williamsburg yep. at, the, at the 212 network, but we first met on a virtual 212. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. They, they put that together. I think it's great, but I'm a little too ADD for that kind of thing, and it just you know, eventually it just gets to be too much, you know? Yeah. I, I'm huge. It's the working remotely for as long as we did. Yeah. Those two to three years with COVID, I couldn't wait to be back face to face. That was like the most exciting part about opening the business was just literally being with people again. Yeah. So it's been, thank God. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. No doubt. Absolutely, yep. man. And, and, uh, you know, praise God for that. You know, I was ready and we, we had started the, um, we had started the podcast, uh, uh, you know, kind of out of, necessity but i i think more of it was you know my wife told me one time years ago that i had a face for radio jokingly i hope um you know so and and then i'd heard for years you know hey you need to do something with your voice so i tried radio i tried to do sure uh you know i tried to do um you know voiceover stuff and you got a name t- for you got a name for radio too yeah right right yeah <laughs> anyways yeah no jokes but um you know, so it was one of those things where I, I, I would try and then nothing would come out of it. Sure. And then one day it just hit me. It was like, dude, podcasting. Everyone can have their own personal radio station and yep. talk about whatever the heck they want. You know, so that's, you know, so that's when we, so in 2019, my daughter and I started, you know, doing stuff like that. And, and I started interviewing business owners. I was like, what? so what do I do? You know, yeah. so, so this, what you and I are doing right now is one of my favorite things to do. I love to talk to business owners i love and it's kind of a little bit selfishly too because i want to learn some stuff so that i don't make the same mistakes in business but then also i understand there are there are folks out there that are going through the same stuff trying to start their own business and and uh you know your listeners and your listeners are going to get to hear that too kind of like learn from absolutely what works what hasn't worked what does 100 100 so we love at, at morning fuel uh my family and i especially we love origin stories. Okay. We love, you know, the first episode of Lord of the Rings. You know, the first Spider-Man episode. You know, how did that superhero be? You know, how did that regular person become the superhero? So, are you Ryan calling me Redman, a superhero? I, I believe you are. I believe you are. So, so, and I believe each one of us is to an extent. If we, if we really believe that, we can actually help other people with our stories instead of keeping them to ourselves. Sure. So, how did Ryan Redman become a business owner? And I don't believe that that Eagle One is your first launch out? No, I mean, I owned a business out of college. Um, this is like 15 years ago, and that's my age, there you go. Um, but it was kind of by accident, I just didn't know what I wanted to do, and a friend of mine kind of knew somebody that was essentially needed contract work, so my first job, business job out of college was essentially owning my own business. Okay. 
So, I mean, you learn a ton doing that, regardless of what it is, because you have to essentially, the better you do at reducing expenses and increasing profits, sure. the more money you make. So you learn a lot quickly doing that. Um, but getting into Eagle One, um, how this all happened, it was, I was with a corporate environment and corporate America, I was with a ins- major, major insurance company. I was constantly moving up the ladder, being promoted, hard work was paying off kind of thing. And it kind of got to the point where I was like hitting my ceiling where I would have needed to jump through whatever the company would have wanted me to do. Not my choice. You have to do X, Y, and Z. You have to move to here, move to there, or you're not going to be promoted was kind of things I was facing. I'm a huge family guy, just like you. Not the TV show, but I'm just a very, very big family guy. And my whole family was down here in Richmond. We had just moved down here. And I didn't want to go live in a great area, great schools. And made a, made, a, made a lot of friends. I didn't want to move anywhere else. And um, combined with that, there was just massive layoffs starting to happen in my company. And when when was this? Probably so. Insurance companies have been impacted by COVID probably over the last year and a half. So we were okay for a while, but then with inflation going up, the cost of fixing cars went up. Sure. So it costs more now more than ever to insure people, and we can only take rate increases essentially when you know when the states allow us to so essentially we just couldn't take enough rating we couldn't increase our prices fast enough so we weren't profitable you have to lay off people um and it was tough you work for this company your entire for really most my my career and i constantly being promoted but then you're watching people get laid off Mm. and i don't even know where where i'm going to be in a year and that's scary to not really have control of that situation sure, at all. Sure, especially when it's not just you you're worrying about. You're no. worrying about family. Yeah, I'm a big family guy. Like, not only my ceilings probably hit at this company because I don't want to move. I could be as great as I want to be, but if I don't want to go anywhere. But now they're laying people off. Anything like that's going to make you think twice about, like, is this really what I want to do with my life? Right. And all of that, people were leaving, getting going to different jobs. And getting paid more money, frankly. And I didn't know where we would be in a year. I was the best guy, but I was like, I need a plan B. Sure. And I need to have something where I can take control of my life. So kind of my, I was like, I need to go back to my roots of what I did before college. I need to start a business. And a business that I think is a super specific niche that I don't think anyone else is really doing. Sure. And I got to find that. Right. And uh, that was kind of what led me here, whereas I just... I need to do something different and I can't wait for Geico to either lay me off, hopefully promote me. It was kind of like, I got to make a decision here. So we did open up uh, the business and that's my origin story to getting started with Eagle One. Yeah, sure. And and when was that? What what year was that when you started? So this all, so I started Eagle One this year. So beginning of this year, I started Eagle One. Um, and, the, and it's been great since I opened it and I, I w- left that company about two months after I started. Okay, well, real quick, back to back to college when you were kind of forced into business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what did What did you start with? What was that? What the business? Yeah. Like a fun little business. So I owned like a vending machine company. Okay. So we were essentially the middleman. Somebody owned the vending machines. This is like gumball machines, okay. stuffed like you know the crane machines with yeah. like we had a team. I had a Those team. Those are of rigged, people. aren't they? Yes. You can make the <laughs> settings whatever the heck you want. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, we had a team of people that serviced like 150 different supermarkets in the Northeast. We did the machines, servicing. I owned the trucks, the routes. I was responsible for the product. So the better, it was interesting to learn that because the, again, the better my logistics were, the better I was at buying product and kind of convincing the company to give better prices. You learned very quickly how to improve your profit margins because the carrot's like right in front of you. Like, if I do well with this, I make more money. Right. And I, you, I figured that out pretty quickly. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so, so um, Eagle One, talk to us a little bit about that. And, yeah. and not, not just about what you do, but uh, what it is you saw that moved you into starting that business or opening that up. Yeah, so, con- so the last thing I did with Geico was I was a business consultant for the, like the local Geico offices. So essentially, how do you grow your business? How do you expand, refer, how do you get referral partners to refer you business to your insurance company? How do you develop your people and your agents? The biggest concern I kept 
coming up with agents all the time was like, I can't get my phone to ring. Like I need more people calling us. Um, and some of it was even like staffing and things like that. But the biggest thing was just like, people aren't calling us. Sure. How do we make that happen? And they were kind of tied a little bit with what corporate Geico would allow them to do. And, but they had their own means of doing it too. And there are other weight avenues to do it. But like that problem came up with every office. And then it was almost, then I looked at other businesses. Everybody wants more leads sure. and more business coming to them. It's just a matter of like, how do they get it? So I thought about doing business consulting, which is what I was doing at Geico for three years. I was very good at it. I was familiar with it. I understand how to help a business scale. Right. But what excited me with Eagle One was like, oh, there's like solutions to this problem that are very clear of, you can literally put processes in place, hire this company, Eagle One, to put processes in place to find leads for you, right. prospects, digital right. marketing, to start funneling leads to your company. Yeah, no, no one, no salesperson, uh, well, except for a few crazies, but no, no salesperson <laughs> they likes, don't, they don't like their, likes they don't work the cold well. call. No. You know, you want to at least have a warm lead. This person was interested a little bit. They actually looked your way. Yes. You know, you're not just going down a phone book list yep. and, and calling people. So. Yeah, I mean, prospecting, it sucks. Like, trying cold calling all day, finding people all day. It's a, it's a very, very difficult job. And it wears people out. Not everybody's good at it. Oh, sure. I mean, what is it like? The, the average is what? Uh, two people interested for every hundred and maybe that one out of those two will actually do business with you. So that's a lot of phone calls. Yeah. And it's a lot of money to pay like people in your company just to do that. Right. To find those. So I, that excited me. I was like, oh, this is a clear solution that would fix a problem that comes up all the time. Right. And there's a lot of company trying to find people to do this. We can do it for you. Put right. processes in place. So you're essentially your salespeople get more at bats. You get these warm leads. Yeah. What, and it puts this process in place to overall get a better return on your investment with anything you're doing. Absolutely. So it was exciting to me. So where um, where are you at with Eagle One now? What is what is uh, what is the need there? I know you're you're so you're fairly. I mean, when it comes to business, you're new in yeah, that, yeah. in that business in that niche. What is it you you see that you need the most right now? That I could use more of. Yeah. Um. Really, I mean, any, like anybody else, clients, right? Like I use our own lead generation services, which sure. have worked well to build our business. But I would love to get in front of more consultants, IT firms, and even uh, referral partners with uh, marketing firms and things like that. Okay. Um, but IT firms, for sure, and, um, and consultants um, okay. are very good niche for us that we have proven success with. Um, but anybody, we're pretty client agnostic. Anybody that typically either needs better referral partners to refer them business, we got right. solutions for that, or just wants more at bats for in B two B sales relationships. Wants more at bats for their sales teams. We want to we want to talk to those guys. Right. Cool. Okay. So what about um, what about you know fa you're a family guy, just like sure. me. You, what's your what's your favorite thing to do like on the weekends? I mean, you, you take a day off, don't you? At least one. I try to. Um, Honestly, favorite thing. So I got little ones. How old are your kids? Twenty three and seventeen. So both girls. The, both girls. So we're in the opposite spectrum. I got a six three on uh, and a one year old. She's about to turn one now. They get funner. Yeah, they do. They when do. The person, honestly, as their personality, the older they get, I've enjoyed it more and more. Yeah. You just have a the relationship just continues to improve. Yeah. Um, what and, do you What do you guys do? What, what's your favorite thing to do? Right now, I mean, the weather's finally not 98 degrees outside anymore. So frankly, it's just been getting outside, playing yeah. in the backyard, playing sports, riding our bikes, um, or just grabbing a beer. I mean, that's kind of right. just yeah. hanging out you with the family and, you and the a beer. You and the three-year-old? Yeah, the three-year-old chugs and the seven-year-old. You got you to gotta be careful with him. <laughs> a bottle. Yeah, you got to keep an eye on him. Yeah, right? keep an eye on that guy. No, so um, is there a family activity? Is there something maybe in your, um, you know, and, and we'll talk about this as much as you want, uh, but, but when it comes to, when I grew up, camping was our thing. Like we would go to Cedar Point, Long Island and, and are you from we, New York? I, I am. I'm from, uh, I'm from Suffolk County. I'm from Shirley, North Shirley. Oh, okay. So I, I had no idea until born and raised in, in South Shirley. And then our biggest move was to North Shirley. Okay. So anyway, so I'm from upstate there, New York. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. So live in there and then we would go camping at Cedar Point. And uh, so, you know, Long Island looks like a fish, right? So yep. between the tails of the fish was Cedar Point. Yep. And uh, so, you know, we would go. And so I grew up camping. So when, when my girls were little, it was like, okay, when can we go camping? 
uh, when are they old enough to do that? And I mean, we had our, I remember, you know, with the first one, you're always a little bit more, oh, don't touch that. Yeah, you yeah. know, oh my gosh, keep that out of your mouth. But with the second one, you're a little bit like, okay, go go get your own bowl of cereal. Just climb up on the counter. Yeah, it's funny so, how that changes. Yeah, so when 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 my youngest was, was born, I think she, my wife would correct me, but I believe it was uh, when she was about, it was between four and eight months old. We went on our first camping trip with the girls. So my oldest was six. She was about eight months old, and I remember just we're tent camping in Virginia this time, and it just reminded me of my childhood. What is it that you would do with your kids that you've kind of implemented? What's a family tradition that you would you would do with your kids? Our favorite thing is going to the beach. Okay. We just went to the beach. Uh, we went to Hilton Head, which is beautiful. Oh, yeah. I love that place. And um, we, that's our thing is going to the beach. Okay. We're not big campers. Um, we'll probably start doing some camping in the backyard or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's where you got to start. Yeah, got to right? cook some marshmallows or something. Like I got to start least. easy before I take them out in the woods. Right. And uh, yeah, we love going to the beach. We just went on a beach vacation. I'd love to do a second one, even like the off season when it's not right. as crazy. So that's um that's what we would like to do. Also with like, I can't wait. So Aiden, my son, is old enough to start going to like basketball okay, games. Okay, so he's the oldest. How old is he? He's gonna be, he's six and a half ish. Okay, gotcha. So, could take him to some basketball games, VCU games, and stuff like that. Okay. So, he's starting to get into sports and watching sports and stuff like that and playing them. So, I can't, I'm excited to get him into that. Yeah. I think the things you love, you know? Right. Like sure. to, I know you do work with your kids and things. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's exciting when they start to like the things you like. Sure. You can have similar interests. Um, and then things with the daughter, I'm excited to do those things as well, take her dance class and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Us as, as dads, especially, I think our worlds are turned on their heads when we have girls. Now, so I haven't yeah. had the have the privilege or honor to have uh, have a boy. Sure. But but my daughters, they are, you know, they they changed my life. I, I remember, yeah. you know, taking my youngest, you know, we a simple trip to McDonald's for breakfast was, you know, was an adventure, was a very, very special time. Yep. You know, still when, is, when she still was, is a mind. Absolutely. It's crazy. Right? So so it's funny. And then relish every moment and remember yeah. every moment. So cool. So when it comes to business and uh, what would you say, uh, you know, looking at books you've read, looking at perhaps uh, influencers you follow, you know, other folks in in business, what what would you say kind of is maybe your your bent? What is it? How do you, what's your kind of personality when it comes to to running a business? You've got you've got employees, you've got, yep. you know, virtual um, you know, folks that you, you farm services out to, what would sure. you say would be maybe perhaps the person that you would kind of try and emulate? Yeah. So I think, and this probably is from my consulting background, whether it's books I've read, or I think just, I like scaling. I like the idea of scaling businesses, whether it's putting processes and people in place. And I think that's probably what drew me to Eagle One is because it's literally putting processes sure. in place. So whether it's like, I mean, we literally talked about this, like the four hour work week, Right. Um, like just putting people and processes in place there to kind of scale a business, even um, just different books on business development, leadership development, um, specific person. I can't even think there's been so much novels and books I've read. It's the idea of scaling and putting processes in place to make things run more efficiently. So almost you can work your way out of a position um, rather than being the one in the job. You don't want to, you don't buy a business to, to buy a job, that's not the idea. Right. You buy a business to be able to scale it, um, but also to to do the things you enjoy doing. Um, so I like those ideas, and I like to be able to do that um, and kind of help people do that. Um, but yeah, Very there's not cool. one particular person. All right. Well, before I ask my last question, uh, how do folks get in contact with you? How where, how are you most easily? I mean, I know the answer to that. But What's I'll the answer? Let you say it. The answer is LinkedIn. Yes. The answer is LinkedIn. <laughs> Look them up. Uh, send him a message. He'd be happy to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, is that is that it? Okay. So I how, think LinkedIn's by far the best way to get a hold of me right so now. So Ryan Redman. Yep. Ryan Redman, Eagle One, Richmond. You'll find me there. You either Fantastic. find me on Google, but LinkedIn. I'm I'm there all day. Okay. And we'll add some stuff to the show notes, co contact information, awesome. and stuff like that. Uh, so also, um, real quick, you are uh, have or are in the middle of starting a podcast. Yes. Uh, so what is the, what's the, the premise? What's the name? How can folks see it? Yep. So we're just putting the content together now. So okay, we'll start excellent. releasing episodes. All right, man. And uh, I might use my guy here to help me out a little bit. Okay. I know, uh, I know somebody. Yeah, I know somebody. I know, I know a guy who can help us out. 
It's uh, called The Catalyst. It's cool. essentially kind of what I went through, kind of my, or, I guess, the origin story, like you said. Yeah, yeah. It's looking, it's, the purpose is to kind of empower and educate people how to get out of the nine to five and how to start become an entrepreneur. Nice. And the, we do that through interviews of essentially people who went through that process, right. kind of the obstacles they faced and how they overcame it. Very the, cool, man. And it's called, it. it's called the catalyst. We want to know what was the catalyst that drove you to make the jump and take action. Right. And I think, what excites me a lot about business is there's people who take action, and this is in business world or in entrepreneurship, people who take action and people who don't. And people who take action typically see better results over time. And the people who don't usually have the most regrets. Yes, and that's what it's about, is they've made the jump, and what was the cat their story, and what was the catalyst to that jump, but also like how to do it successfully. Like I'm not telling you just to make a jump. Like right. There's gonna be things in the way, there's gonna be obstacles. Like it's a long it's a long it's a marathon it yes, takes it a while to get there how do you overcome those things how do you get a network of people to support you um, what's the things you need to know healthcare insurance all those things you don't think about when you're working a nine five what are the things you need to put in place to so you're ready your family's ready to right. make a jump well cool man last question we touched on this earlier sure and that is right now what does ryan redmond need as a business owner what do you need I need businesses that want to get more leads to their sales team. Okay. Is there any one or any particular um, niche or industry that you would like to focus on? People that you'd like to be in, co in contact with and communication with? Yeah, absolutely. IT and technology firms. Okay. I would love to talk to you. There are specific uh, packages that we have set for those, to, those kind of companies that will help them scale their business, get leads and more at-bats to their sales team. Uh, so they can grow a big i want to help businesses here in virginia expand fantastic and i want to help them do that good man we love local so that's fantastic and i know some people i'm going to introduce you to awesome so man i really appreciate you thank yeah, you man. so much for being appreciate on the show on, man. and uh um I'm, I'm glad i came to richmond to yeah man it. this is awesome glad you came out as well we're gonna have to have it on the catalyst i can't wait awesome i man. can't wait awesome